So this week we are doing isolation and purification of caffeine from tea leaves. So caffeine is a natural product that can be found in coffee plant, tea bush, and cola nut. By manipulating the solubility of substances through solvent polarity and proton transfer reactions, we can use to extract and purify the desired compound, which is caffeine, from a complex solution. Okay, so be sure to read up experiment 11B, which is a lab procedure for this week. Uh, the tea leaves will be in the tea bag, and we will use extraction method and separations and sub sublimation techniques to purify caffeine. Right? They are written in technique number 10 and technique number 17. So be sure to read up these uh, lab techniques as well. Okay. I assumed some of you or most of you had coffee or tea this morning. Yes, I definitely did have coffee this morning, a cup of coffee this morning to keep me awake. And caffeine, which is a key ingredient in the coffee that's keeping me awake, is a psychoactive substance that can be found in coffee bean, right? And there's a very interesting story behind the discovery of coffee beans and um, the story goes that in Ethiopia around 980, a goat herd discovered his flock eating bright red berries from an unfamiliar tree. And he witnessed this magical fruit has transformed the lethargic goat into a dancing magical creatures. So he decided to try the berries himself and discovered coffee. So basically, I guess, um, coffee is discovered by goat. So if you uh, have a lazy animal or, or animals that are depressed, give them some coffee and they will start dancing. Okay, and uh, caffeine is interestingly is also a biodefense mechanism for uh, uh, for some of the plant, and it's naturally synthesized uh, by plant and. Uh, it is to prevent and kill off uh, any parasites or insects attacking their their plant, their own species. So it is uh, basically a uh, bioweapons, right? Um, if you look at coffee beans, the active ingredients is only about five percent in a coffee bean, and if you look at um, tea leaves, it's only about two to five percent, right? So that is not a lot, okay? But it's very active biomechanism. Okay, bioactive ingredients, all right? If you had a cup of coffee, then you have you have consumed about 100 milligram of caffeine in a cup. And if you had black tea, it's about uh, 50 milligram of caffeine in a cup, right? If you have, if you have gone to Starbucks, uh, Rondi Starbucks drips is around 35 milligram, right? So this caffeine is keeping us happy and awake throughout the day, okay? But if you take too much, let's say LD50, which is lethal dose to kill off 50% of the population, right? That means if you take uh, too much coffee, let's say 250 milligram per kilogram of your weight, okay, then you, you can kill yourself by drinking too much coffee. Let's say if you weigh about uh, 70 kilogram and there's around 22 milligram of coffee, caffeine in a cup, and if you consume 125 cups of coffee in one sitting, one of you will die, right? Half of you, uh, two out of uh, one out of two people will die of this uh, lethal dose, okay, of caffeine. So don't drink too much coffee, okay? Um, I don't uh, think anyone can drink uh, 125 cups of coffee in one sitting anyway. So uh, enjoy the coffee, but don't drink too much, okay? Tea is a complex solution, right? So you, we have uh, caffeine in tea, that's an active ingredient, that's correct. But it also contains other alkaloids, which is theophylline and theobromine as well. So these theophylline and theobromine, they have very similar structure with caffeine, right? They all belong to, all three of them, belongs to uh, xanthine alkaloids family. We call it alkaloids because it has nitrogen containing um, a, a molecule and they are basic. Okay, if you look at the structure, they all have nitrogens on them. And if you look at caffeine, it has 
uh, three degrees of a methylation group, right? So you have three here. If you look at theophylline, there are two methylation groups. And in um, theobromine, it's only two as well, but in a different position, right? But they all belong to xanthine alkaloids family. Beside alkaloids in uh, tea, you also have catechin, another compound. You also have flavonoid, right? Different flavor of tea have a different uh, a substituent, different structure, right? But the key uh, skeleton is this structure. So different tea uh, flavor have different uh, uh, substituents as well. R is a different substituent, okay? Another uh, big component is chlorophyll, chlorophyll right? Chlorophyll uh, is in, uh, present in every leaves, right? So we can't get away from chlorophyll, okay? And the brown coloring that uh, give uh, tea and coffee is, we call it tannin, right? So if you look at tannin molecule, it's pretty complex, but it has a sugar or uh, what is this, glucose molecule. Okay. This glucose molecule in the presence of water or heat, when you brew the tea and um, a coffee, it can break down into glucose right, and gallic acid. Okay. So uh, bear in mind that uh, uh, tea solution is a complex mixture. Okay. You have all sort of alkaloids, catechin, flavonoid, chlorophyll, and glucose and gallic acid. Okay. And how do we separate all these? How do we isolate caffeine? Right? It's a mess. So let's look at that in detail. To extract caffeine from tea solution, there are several steps involved. So looking at this slide, there are a lot of uh, extraction steps and uh, separation steps. So don't get overwhelmed. We're going to look at it one step at a time. So let's focus on the top uh, half portion of a separation scheme here. Okay, so we are starting off with a tea leaves, and you're going to brew the tea leaves in a water, hot water. Once it's brewed, you get tea solution, right? So you get your tea, which has caffeine, tannins, and other alkaloids as well. And you can throw out the tea bags, remove the tea bags, and just throw it out in a trash can. And your tea, solu tea solution will be left in a beaker, right? And once it's cooled down, you will then add uh, sodium bicarbonate. Sodium bicarbonate is a base that will react with tannin, which is an acidic uh, molecule, right? Uh, it, the base will deprotonate uh, tannin to form a tannin salt, which become soluble in water, right? So tannin get deprotonated to give a salt form, okay? So tannin salt right here, that is in the aqueous solution, okay? Once you re, uh, allow the tannin to react with sodium bicarbonate, then you add uh, dichloromethane, which is organic solvents, right? Organic solvents were partitioned with aqueous uh, water to form two layers, and um, uh, in an organic phase, you will get uh, alkaloids, caffeine, and some water as well, and dichloromethane, okay? So let's look at uh, that in detail. So you transfer the tea and sodium bicarbonate, the base, uh, into a test tube instead of a beaker. You transfer that into a centrifuge tube, right? And then you're going to add uh, dichloromethane, right? Dichloromethane is an organic solvent that will partition with the uh, aqueous solution to form bilayers. Right. By layers mean um, two layers. They don't. They are. Um, they don't like to be uh, be together. They like to be separated. So that's where the partitioning come from, and they are um, immiscible. Okay. They don't like to be together. So you, you form two layers. So the bottom layers uh, is um, where the uncharged species, alkaloids and caffeine, are pulled down into uh, dichloromethane organic layers. And the top layer is the tea solution. That's where the undesired components like tannin salt is stayed in an aqueous layer, right? Remember, it's a tannin salt is in here. Okay, it's a charged species. Okay, tannin is then uh, separated from the uh, a complex solution. 
right? So this charged species will stay in an aqueous solution and caffeine and alkaloids at the bottom, okay? So if you do not know which uh, layer is which, uh, if you don't know the organic layer, which one is the top layer, you can do a very simple test in, a, in the lab, okay? So let's say if you take a drop of water, take a drop of water and put it into the centrifuge tube, okay? And if the drop of water goes stays at the top, then you know that the top is a aqueous layer, okay? And if you take the drop of organic layer and put it into the test tube, okay, if it goes to the bottom, then that bottom belongs to organic solvent, organic layer, right, which is at the bottom. Okay, that's how you can determine which layer is, is aqueous and which layer is organic. Okay, yeah, using a very simple test. Or you, or you can also look up the densities of the dichloromethane, right? The more dense solution will stay at the bottom, right? If the, the T is density of one and dichloromethane, you can check it out and compare the density and you can determine which layer is which, okay? So from here, uh, you can, uh, we can then extract the caffeine uh, from a tea solution, okay? But it's not done yet, right? So let's look at more in detail. So um, once we get the organic solution, right? Organic layer, which is dichloromethane layer, okay? So we come to this step. It is still has uh, some traces of water, alkaloid, caffeine, and dichloromethane, which is organic uh, solvent solution right here, okay? So from here, we're gonna move on to uh, make another phase, another layer, and another extraction step, and uh, we'll look at that in detail in the next slide. Even though we have two distinct layers of uh, organic and aqueous layer, there is always small amounts of water presence in organic layer. That means uh, water is somehow attracted to organic layer and there's traces of water in a uh, dichloromethane layer. So how do we get rid of uh, those uh, little bits of water? Uh, we cannot pipette them out. We cannot uh, uh, decant the water uh, bits, a little droplets of water from organic layer. So the only way to get rid of these droplets of water is to add a drying agent, right? We call it drying agent because, well, it has to get rid of the water and the organic layer become very dry, right? All the little bits of water is gone. So we call it drying agent. It will absorb the water out from organic layer, okay? So the common drying agents we use in the labs is uh, mainly anhydrous sodium sulfate, or you can also use anhydrous magnesium sulfate or anhydrous calcium chloride, okay? So we call it anhydrous, right? We call it anhydrous because these salts are very dry. That means it doesn't have a water molecule in there, okay? It's magnesium sulfate, calcium chloride, potassium carbonate. It has no water molecule, which is good because we don't want water in there. Right? We, we're trying to get rid of water from organic layer. So if we add this sodium sulfate to organic layer, it should remove water. Okay? You have seen this uh, uh, drying agent, also uh, silica dioxide, in, um, in, in food packages or product packages, you will see little packets of silica. Okay? You will see little packets of silica. Those packets of silica, what it does is it removes uh, it removes water from uh, environment, right, to keep the products very dry. That's why we call it drying agents, okay? So what happens if you add uh, anhydrous sodium sulfate into an uh, organic layer, dichloromethane? Well, the whole point is to remove water, right? Little droplets of water. So sodium sulfate will react with water to give what? Adding two... If you can bear with me, I'm writing with the mouse and it's slow and not very good. This writing is not very good. The pen is not very good. So you get uh, a hydrated salt, right? So this become hydrated salt in hit instead of uh, anhydrous sodium sulfate, right? Once it reacts with water, it takes away the water molecule and this whole thing, it becomes solid. 
right? It is a solid. Now we can easily get rid of this solid, right? You can simply either pipe it out the organic layer and leave the solid behind, right? The solid contain hydrated salt, sodium sulfate or uh, uh, hydrated with water, right? Water is removed from organic layer, okay? That's what the drying agent does, okay? Coming back to uh, separation scheme, uh, notice we have organic layer, which is uh, has dichloromethane, caffeine, and other alkaloids, and we added um, anhydrous sodium sulfate to remove traces of water, right? So if you add sodium sulfate into organic layer, you then have a solid form of hydrated sodium sulfate, which remove water from organic phase. Right, so this organic layer is become um, very dry. We call it dry organic layer, okay? Because water traces of water is removed as a hydrate, uh, sodium sulfate uh, is a solid, so you can then filter it out or you can decant out the solution of organic layer, and this organic layer is very dry, okay? So in order to get a pure caffeine, uh, simply you need to remove the dichloromethane solvent. Right, organic solvent. This organic solvent is uh, volatile, so the boiling point is uh, about uh, 40 degrees Celsius. Boiling point is 40 degrees Celsius, so you can simply evaporate off the solvent. So that removes the dichloromethane from uh, uh, caffeine, right? Caffeine and alkaloids. That this uh, we are still left with caffeine and alkaloid without dichloromethane, so this we call it crude, right? We still get uh, crude caffeine because crude, because it's not pure yet, right? We still get, need to get rid of uh, alkaloid. So how do we do that? So in the next step, we will do um, sublimation, right? Subliming the caffeine and uh, to get pure caffeine. Right? and to get rid of also traces of alkaloid. So let's look at in detail in our next slide. Normally when we heat a solid, it will melt into liquid and then eventually boil off into a gaseous state. Right? So that's what we expect at room temperature. Okay? But some substances may transition from, uh, directly from solid to gas at particular pressures and temperature. So, for example, if you look at dry ice, okay, dry ice never form a liquid, right? It goes from gas, a solid to gas directly. So we call it sublimation, okay? Sublimation is a process where uh, substances go from solid to gas, okay? So let's look at the phase diagram, how it, it is achieved, okay? Uh, a very uh, simple phase diagram is water. So... Um, we are aware that at one atmospheric pressure, okay, if you at zero degrees Celsius, water is solid, right? It is uh, solid, okay? As you heat the water, okay, as you heat the water, it will melt, okay, melt at particular temperature. And then if you continue to heat at and uh, heat the water, and if it reach 100 degrees Celsius, it will boil off into a, a gaseous state, right? So this become water become goes from uh, solid ice, then become water, liquid, and then become a gas. Okay, so that's what we expect at uh, one atmospheric pressure, right? But if you lower the pressure a little bit, for example, at 0.0. .0 Zero 06 atmospheric pressure, you decrease the pressure, then the temperature uh, uh, increase a little bit from 0, 0.0 degrees Celsius to uh, 0 0.01 degrees Celsius. What happened here is the ice go from solid, okay, directly to a gas, to a vapor, right? We call this sublimation, okay? As you decrease the pressure, the ice uh, go from solid into a gas, uh, immediately, right? So this is called sublimation procedure, or, uh, sublimation process, okay? By manipulating the uh, uh, atmosphere pressure and temperature a little bit, okay? Similarly, we can see that in uh, caffeine as well. Turns out that caffeine can subline in a, subline in a, uh, a partial pressure, okay? If you uh, decrease the pressure a little bit, caffeine can subline. So we're gonna look at in detail, okay? 
To sublime caffeine, we need to set up sublimation apparatus. So let's look at this uh, glassware here. So on the top, we have sublimation tube. Uh, sublimation tube is basically a little skinny, uh, like a long funnel inserted into a multi-purpose adapter. And this uh, sublimation tube contained ice water. We call it cold finger, okay? And uh, the multi-purpose adapter is then connected to the house vacuum. And uh, the adapter is then sealed with a thin conical valve where the uh, crude uh, caffeine is at the bottom, right? So you have crude caffeine, crude because it has caffeine and alkaloid at the bottom, okay? It's not pure yet, okay? So this whole setup is called uh, sublimation apparatus. Once you turn on the vacuum, okay, what it does is it lowers the pressure, right? Uh, I'll put a note here, it lowers the pressure lower the pressure, I'll just write it as pressure as a P, lower the pressure. Once the system is uh, has a reduced pressure, you can turn on the micro burner to provide heat, right? You With a high amount of heat, you can chase the crude uh, caffeine along the glass wall. Chase me, you can try to heat up the conical valve, the, only the glass region. And then once the uh, once it's hot enough, what will happen is caffeine will start to subline, right? Caffeine will start to subline in a uh, form of gaseous state, but once it touched this cold finger, which has ice water, right? Which has ice water, it will condense back, right? The gas, caffeine gas will condense back and form a white powder along the uh, cold finger, along the sublimation tube right here. So that's how you separate between uh, caffeine and alkaloids, right? What is left behind will be what? Um, it's a burnt off alkaloid, okay? We'll put a note here, alkaloid, right? So this will be like uh, burnt, will be black color, dark black color, alkaloids, uh, traces of alkaloids at the bottom, they will be left behind. And the top right here, the one that condenses at the finger, Cold finger will be a pure caffeine. Okay, that's how you separate the 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 crude extract. Uh, uh, get the uh, caffeine subline from the alkaloid. Right, alkaloid will not subline. It will just burn off and will be left behind. Okay, so um, in looking uh, in summary, what you have to do is make sure you set up this apparatus. Okay, make sure to set up this apparatus, uh, and before putting ice in a sublimation tube. Right. Putting the ice will be the last, right? So set up the glassware first and then put the ice and then turn on the vacuum, right? Turn on the vacuum and then gently heat the uh, thin conical valve with the micro burners, okay? Just heat, a, heat the glass area, okay? You want to heat up only the glass area, not the plastic cap, okay? This is made of plastic. So do not heat the plastic, it will melt, okay? So just heat the glass area, we call it chasing the caffeine right along the glassware, which is stuck along the glassware, probably up here. So you just chase it with the heat and the caffeine will start to supply, okay? Once you're done with that, turn off, uh, turn off the vacuum and uh, remove the cold finger from the apparatus and gen gently scrape off the caffeine, right? You can do this uh, outside the hood, right? Because inside the hood, uh, uh, there's an air vent going on and the caffeine is very powdery, very light. So you don't want the caffeine flying off into a vacuum hood, right? You can do this outside the hood, okay? So now you get a pure caffeine, right? Once you get the weight of pure caffeine, then you can calculate the percent yield of caffeine in the original mass of tea leaves, right? You must have recorded down this uh, uh, mass of tea leaves in the beginning of the lab, right? With these two data, you can then calculate the, uh, the, the percent yield of caffeine you extracted from the tea solution, okay? And next, you need to assess the purity of the caffeine by uh, doing a melting point experiment. So basically, you need to prepare the caffeine in a little glass sealed tube, okay? It needs to be closed need to be sealed, okay? Using a Bunsen burner, you can seal the tube. And if you don't know how to do it, ask instructor or TA, okay? They should be able to help you out, okay? Basically, you're trying to uh, find out the temperature where caffeine go from solid to liquid, okay? So it's a melting point of caffeine.
right? So it, this lab is a very fun lab. Uh, it's a natural product chemistry uh, caffeine, right? And we learn a lot of techniques from this one experiment. We learn about extraction, uh, separation, okay? Different types of uh, uh, steps in separation and also uh, sublimation techniques, right? So don't forget, uh, coffee is discovered by goat. Okay, there's a happy goat here drinking coffee and they are all dancing and human enjoy coffee as well. So if you haven't had coffee, you can go get one now, right? And keep yourself awake.